okay, I thought the best way to answer the question about how I get so much done, full-time orthopedic surgeon, but also you know, write a blog post every, you know, every day or every weekday, the, the podcast episode, the newspaper column, all of that would be to show you. And I think the biggest take-home point of all of this that I want to get across is that I don't do it all. There'd be no way. I did that for the first two to three years with the blog and the podcast. I did all of it. And I was sleeping about four or five hours a night max, and I was staying up late, and I was tired, and just the output wasn't as good. It was taking longer to do every task, and I just it wasn't sustainable. So I started to get people to help. And the, the biggest step I took forward is that I hired a virtual assistant. Now, my virtual assistant is from EA Help, which is a company. I think they're based in Georgia, in Atlanta, but I may be wrong about that. But they have assistants everywhere. Mine's name is Jen, and she's in South Dakota, and she's fantastic. And we talk probably twice a week basically in a planning uh, session, uh, conference call, and we talk about different tasks. And what's important is that I do the tasks that only I can do, which in my case is create the content, write about the sports injury, the treatment, the injury prevention, the wellness idea. I'm not needed to upload it to my blog. I'm not needed to schedule the tweets about it. Even though I create all that, I write that. It's all my idea, my content, my brain, uh, and my communication with people. I'm not necessarily involved in every single step of getting it out there because it's just not necessary. I try to focus on the things that only I can do. So let me show you that. Here is Basecamp, and don't get caught up on the tools here, but this is our project management software, and these are uh, the different projects we have going on. Now you'll see with the blog, we schedule a fair ways out. And that is because we just found that it's much easier to get a week ahead or two weeks ahead rather than doing it the night before. Occasionally, we'll have to do that if it's a very breaking story or something like that. But it just doesn't happen very often that we wait till the last minute. And like I said, we'll talk usually on Mondays and Thursdays. It's not always, but usually Mondays and Thursdays. Monday will just be catching up anything that needs to be taken care of for that current week. But Thursday is our big call where we look ahead into the next week and make sure we know everything that's going on for next week. So let me show you what she helps a lot with. Let's take a post that I wrote a little earlier. It's a, I write for the Department of Health and Human Services. AOSSM gets to write three or four articles a year for their Be Active Your Way blog, and I write those. But I'll also post them on my website. I'll do it in a modified form. I change the format and some of the text, add pictures and links, make it different on my site than theirs so that Google doesn't punish each side uh, in the search results. But I will write it and basically send it to her as a uh, Word document. That's the part of this, to be fair, that only I can do. So let me show you that. So this is basically what I uploaded to Basecamp earlier today. I basically wrote it as a Word document. Now I'll upload it to Basecamp. That's what you're seeing there. And I'll also create a text document that's basically, and this is a template. I just basically fill it in. It takes me about five minutes, and I'll basically just list you know, what I want the title to be italics, bold, what the excerpt, the little uh, summary that appears on the home page, when I want it to be scheduled, the category, the tags, uh, and what images potentially. Sometimes I'll leave those up to Jen to find appropriate images. Sometimes in this case I had some specifically I wanted to use and I tell her where those are and we share uh, information or a lot of files on Dropbox so that's what those are and and things I want to link to. So now she's got it in a Word document. She knows kind of what I want uh, in terms of instructions, then she basically goes over to WordPress and basically uploads it to the blog. And so this is what she does. I'll show you here as it's loading. Uh, but she basically takes that Word document and uploads it into WordPress. And so she's added all the links. Uh, she's added all of uh, the images. And let me show you a preview. This hasn't actually gone been published yet, but she takes that Word document and then makes it into what you read each time. And that's 
you know, probably, I would guess that's probably 20 to 30 minutes of time that she spent turning it into this format. Now, I know how to do this. I've done this for years. I, I do it, you know, when she's out of town or on vacation, you know, so I can easily do this. But again, this is a relatively straightforward part. And honestly, she can do it a lot faster than I can. But the part she can't do is actually write the content. So I focus on the the part of it that you need me for, which is writing the content. And then she turns around and does the heavy lifting, so to speak. And, you know, that doesn't seem like a big deal. Oh, you save 20 minutes here. But when you're talking about doing something frequently over and over, that 20 minutes becomes huge. Let me give you another example. So I do my podcast episode. I do the outline uh, in a program called Workflow. It's a, a list management uh, software. And you can see episode 136 is one that I'm doing on a sports parent, or by the time you're seeing this, it's already come out. And basically, you know, I've kind of created an outline for the show. She takes that outline and turns it into uh, the post that appears the show notes for that episode. Here, I'll show you that right here. And that is episode number 136. And she will take that outline, add in the athletes' names, add in their teams, add in uh, the topics and the questions that people ask in the Ask Dr. Geyer segment and create uh, the show notes for that episode based on the outline, again, that I created. I did the research and I uh, created the outline of what I want to talk about. She just makes it where you can actually see that. We'll add the the times for each segment once I've recorded it. But again, that's not something that you necessarily need me to do. So every blog post, every podcast episode, I have help getting that information out there so that I can focus on actually recording the show in the case of the podcast or, or creating the content to answer people's sports injury questions. In the case of the blog posts, I'm actually sharing my thoughts in text form and then somebody else turns it into a blog post. The statistics posts uh, that you see every Wednesday, same type of thing. I have a friend of mine that helps me. Basically, I take the journals and I usually do it when I'm watching Liverpool soccer or San Antonio Spurs and basketball and, and highlight statistics that I think are interesting. A friend of mine, I give those journals to a friend of mine that lives here in Charleston. She literally just transcribes those into a text document. Now, those then go back to me, and Jen and I then turn them into short posts. I kind of choose the ones I like and, and, and write it into a two- or three-sentence post, and then she turns it into what you see on Wednesdays, which is just a, a, st a stat, an image, the, the source, and then we'll schedule the tweets for it. So I'm involved in helping with uh, create the content, but I have help in getting it out there. Another good example is every time we do all of these different blog posts of all sorts of different things, obviously you want to promote them. And you guys, I, th I think you've seen how I you know, promote them on Twitter and on Facebook, but you don't need to be the one that's actually going on Twitter five times a day and doing it. There's programs like Hootsuite where you can schedule it, but that doesn't even have to be you. So We'll create the tweets. You know, I'll write them, or or Jen will jot down some ideas, and I'll I'll essentially tweak the tweets, or most of the time write them myself, and then set um, basically a list, and then she'll take that list and then schedule them for me. That thirty minutes or thirty seconds a tweet that adds up if you're doing that, you know, over and over and over. So uh, this is a good example of one uh, later this week where we basically created uh, the tweets. She'll take the URL once the post is published. She'll go to Bitly, paste the link up here. We've programmed Bitly to create those Geyer.md links. She'll take the URL, uh, the Geyer.md slash X34, what, you know, whatever it turns into, add those to the tweets, and then go into Hootsuite and actually schedule them. Now, I don't want you to think that all that social media is automated. It's, there's just... You have to do that because, honestly, most people are on Twitter or on Facebook during working hours while I'm operating or seeing patients in clinic. Now, that doesn't mean I don't go on two or three times a day and respond to people. I think you have to do that. It's a terrible idea not to if all you're doing is just promoting yourself. But literally, you can't upload posts in real time and be an orthopedic surgeon or an other healthcare provider. And honestly, you can't 
even do all that. I mean, I, again, scheduled tweets for every post I wrote for the first two and a half years, but that is just an enormous, enormous time saver. Same thing comes with my email newsletter. It's another good example where I write, those of you that subscribe to my email newsletter, I write the, the intro text that you see at the beginning of the, the email each time. This is the one I wrote that'll come out in a few days. I wrote the text. Then Jen takes it and basically uh, creates the email that goes out. So it's that same text that I wrote with the blog posts added in. But again, it took me you know, probably two minutes of work to create, well, more than two minutes. It takes me about five to 10 minutes to write that text. And then it gets sent out as an, as an email once a week to the people that subscribe. Again, it's not that it's not my thoughts. It's not somebody else writing it. That's not the message I want you to take home. What I want you to take home is that, that it doesn't have to be you that does all the, again, the heavy lifting. Another couple of examples. So I like to collect interviews that I do and media appearances, newspaper articles. So this is one that just came across my email today. I did an interview about Jared Parker for an athletic uh, Oakland A's uh, blog. And so I like to copy my appearances as links onto my blog. So I, what I do is I'll basically just copy the URL and then email it to Jen and she gets it on my media page. So I'll just go to my media interview uh, project in Basecamp, basically copy the URL. This gets sent to her. She gets notified that there's a new interview. And then what she'll do is she'll basically go up and uh, add it to the blog. And if you scroll through my media page, basically where it goes is into these things, all these with links, or actually even if they don't have links, usually those are radio interviews. Um, these are ones that she added, and you saw that took me about 15 seconds to get it to her, and then she'll get it up to my blog. Now, the big thing, I guess, in summary that I think is worth bringing up here is that you can get people to help you, and it can be for anything. It could be like I'm about to move in a week or two or in a month or two, you know, and I'm not using Jen for this purpose, even though I could, but to call moving companies and get estimates or to arrange for piano movers or people to take down your TVs. It could be people, you know, get help to send uh, gifts or notices to love to people if they had a loved one die. I mean, it can be any number of things. And it doesn't have to be to free up time for social media, even though I think that that's a great use of the time. But it could be that you want to spend more time with your kids or that you want to um, spend more time with your family. So you want to offload, you know, two, three, five hours a week, you know, to basically free up more uh, fun time. And I think that that's fine. You know, I hire Jen. She works for me 10 hours a week. Let me tell you, if I did the things that she does for me, it would take me about 30 hours a week to do all that. I don't have 30 hours to do all that. So if I can pay somebody to do it in 10, it's just better for, for me in so many ways. I sleep more. I'm less stressed. It's fantastic, and I think you ought to consider it. Again, I'm a huge fan of EA Help. I think they're terrific. I wouldn't say that it's something you absolutely, I mean, there's plenty of companies out there. There's groups in the Philippines and other countries that can do it very cheaply. I think with EA Help, it's fantastic. Jen is very eloquent. I can have her make calls for me and do things over the phone, uh, and she represents me very well, and I've heard nothing but great things from EA Help, so you can definitely uh, give them uh, a a, you know, call. I've included a link in the blog post. Again, I work with them, full disclosure, uh, but I, I will say that I, I use them and highly recommend them. But there are other groups. But the point of this is to know that to be Superman or Superwoman, you can't do it all alone. And, and there's no shame in that. If anything, it's, it's, it's tremendously liberating. You'll get so much more done with much less effort, and honestly, with better peace of mind if you get people to help you. So think about getting a virtual assistant. I can't recommend it enough.